Hi folks, Ross here from Open Airway. I'm in the UCT Anesthesia Airway Skills Lab uh, and I'm going to do a quick video now just on the basics of how to insert a, uh, an easy blocker which is a bifurcated uh, dual balloon bronchial blocker which we use for thoracic procedures and some uh, cardiac procedures. So the easy blocker comes in a uh, package with its uh, Y connector which is good, obviously quite important for us uh, and you're going to need a large size endotracheal tube so an 8, 8.5 eight is usually fine you're going to need an endoscope or a flexible fiberscope to position it uh, and you're going to need a syringe to inflate your cuffs and so forth you can see easy blocker has got two cuffs and the idea is to place this at the carina so we can uh, isolate either right or left by inflating the relevant cuff you'll notice that the cuffs are more or less yellow and blue uh, and the, the pilot balloons are more or less yellow and blue so that you can recognize which cuff is which. Uh, I like to before my case prepare these carefully so that I'm ready to go and it doesn't cause me any delay so I'm going to have taken this and do this in a sterile fashion uh, have lubricated my easy block and my cuffs carefully insert those into my wire connector so they're ready to go and you'll see that there is then a, a screw cap which attaches here that obviously allows me to ventilate and don't screw that too tightly or you can't adjust the position of the easy blocker and then I've got a second port over here for my scope to go through so I will have prepared my fiber scope ready to go and then this side connector here is for my ventilation so for the purpose of the video let me grab a grab a bag of mask and I'm going to connect that over there is that's where I connect my anesthesia circuit so I can ventilate right so that's all ready to go here's my patient who is now under anesthesia and one of the nice things about using a bronchial blocker is if you've got a patient who's got more difficult airway anatomy where you'd struggle with a double lumen tube uh, you can use a single lumen tube and place a blocker with a relative amount of ease so shame this guy's got his tricky airway I'm going to go in here with my video laryngoscope and there I can get a nice little grade 2 view and I've got my introducer, introducers in, tube is in, can inflate my cuff and confirm my position and ventilate. Right, so let's blow up this cuff and I'm going to ventilate my patient. So I would usually connect him to my circular my anesthesia machine and I'm ventilating him. Right, so this guy's got a bronchial tree, not lungs, so obviously you can't see the chest move. So then I would secure my tracheal tube and I'm happy. At this stage, I usually connect my wire connector and put my ventilator back on. So let's just put this over here just as a mental aid to think that we've now connected and we're ventilating our patient. So everything is nice and stable. Now I can go ahead and I can place my uh, bronchial blocker. So the first thing I do is I feed the bronchial blocker down the ET tube before it disappears and then I place my fiberscope in the tube. What I want to do here is I want to chase that bronchial blocker down the ET tube. When you're putting this fiberscope through, just be careful that there's a little bit of a step as you go into the ET tube and you don't want to force the tip of the uh, uh, scope against that step and bend the scope. Right, so now we're going down our uh, ET tube, you can see the bronchial blocker leading the way there. Now I've come up against the hub of that bifurcation, it's not yet out the ET tube, and so it's nice if you've got an assistant to help you with this, otherwise when you get skilled you can do it quite easily by yourself. And I'm going to chase my, bron my bronchial blocker down the ET tube until it pops out the end. Right, so now we are into the trachea, and I can follow it and I can see where it's going. Right, so in this model there's again just a little bit of a step here that I need to get the bronchial blocker past. That's annoying. If you're struggling with the orientation of your bronchial blocker, you can put a bit of a rotation on it uh, and then it should advance. And you advance this nicely until it goes out. Now, what you want is it sitting nicely at the carina and you can see I've got both legs going down the right main bronchus in this instance. If that happens, come back a little bit, rotate the bronchial blocker, so twist it at the top and then re-advance. Now I need to rotate some more. And again, it's obviously always easier to do this when you've got an assistant to help you and don't have a step in the trachea. And this is, there we go. Right, now I've got it sitting. That was quite nice that it actually showed us the one significant problem you can have. Now I've got it sitting at the carina and now I can turn this to lock off the bronchial blocker that it's held in place there at the carina. Right, now I can actually carry on, take the scope out, move the patient, roll them into a lateral position, get ready for surgery, and when I want to isolate my lung, I pop my scope back down again, and I can see here what looks like quite a blue cuff on that side. Which one looks more blue to you? It, that one on the left actually looks like the blue one, and that is the slightly yellow looking one. So let's say we wanted to 
uh, isolate the right lung. So I'll inflate this yellow cuff and there you can see the blocker inflating and I can make sure that I get a minimal occlusion pressure in the cuff just to occlude that lung. And now that lung can collapse nicely, right? And, I, and if I want to, what I usually do is I then go and write right on this cuff or left on that cuff so I know later down the line which is which and I can maintain my orientation. Right. The advantage of doing this is that if my patient's going to ICU post-operatively, I can then deflate my cuffs. I can always do an inspection with my uh, videoscope if I want to. And when it comes to the end of the case, if I don't want to extubate the patient, I can deflate both cuffs, keep the tube in situ, take the bronchial blocker off, and my patient can then go to ICU with his endotracheal tube. And I don't have to change the tube. So that's a very, very quick how-to with a uh, bifurcated uh, dual cuff bronchial blocker. This is the easy blocker uh, and they are reasonably easy to use. One of the other videos will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of bronchial blockers versus uh, uh, double lumen tubes and what situations we'd use each one. That's it, thank you.